G'day viewers, this is Troy from the Troy's Digital Arts channel. I'm going to be firing up my Iconoscope camera once again uh, today. Basically, I'm going to, this time I'm going to be shielding out as much light around the Iconoscope tube as possible. So, nothing, no light except for the light coming from the taking lens will hit the Iconoscope tube's mosaic surface. So yeah, um, I'm making a temporary enclosure around it using simply just cardboard. So I've already done one side. Um, I'm going to do the other side as well. Just and then I'm going to stick this bit of cardboard over the top, and yeah, and gaff it, pretty much gaffer tape it all together. And then I'm going to fire it up. I'm also um, this time when I fire it up and. Um, get something on the display happening. I'm also I'm going to pretty much split the video output to both the television monitor and the oscilloscope hidden behind that lamp. So that way I can see what's going on with the video signal coming out. Because I, I didn't really do that last time. I pretty much you know switched from one to the other and it was difficult to tell exactly what I was getting on the scope. So that's what I'll be pretty much doing. And here yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anyhow, I'm going to continue on this video once I've taped all the cardboard around the tube. Okay, the iconoscope tube is now fully enclosed underneath this cardboard, so very little stray light can come in onto the tube. Ex so we get mostly the light coming in from the taking lens. Anyway, the camera is now fired up. And this time I've got the video output split to both the monitor and to the oscilloscope. And I have also labelled all the controls as well. So from, from the top you've got the ALC. Um, I'm not sure what that's abbreviated for. I can't remember. You got the black level control, you got the high frequency peak control, you got the sync amp control. That's in the video circuits. On the deflection circuits, you got the line frequency control, the horizontal width, the vertical height, and the uh, focus current, which you, which of course has no effect because I've disabled the the um, focus circuitry because we're not using electronic focus for. I'm not using the focus coil for this tube, it's optical focus. Anyhow, on the display I've um, we've got the video output waveform. Um, yep, I've uh, adjusted the line frequency to 64 microseconds, which is for for um, power standard. And um, yeah, I've um, adjusted the waveform so I can easily see what's going on here. And on display, once again, we haven't got a picture. So I haven't really done any modifications to the circuitry to even try and get a picture yet. The main thing we want to see is what's going on with the output and um, how the iconoscope will fare without any um, spurious light coming in from the sides and everything. So yeah, that's pretty well enclosed off. And I'm doing a bit of testing. Um, so yeah, whilst we're not getting a video signal, we are getting a bit of reaction um, when I shine some light down the tube. The way I've got it adjusted at the moment, we're getting not very much reaction. Probably hardly any noticeable, but I'm going to try and adjust the anode a bit. See if we can get to a state where I can it can pick up some very slight reaction. Just the anode and the grid one voltage, anode one, grid one. And I'll shine the light down and we're getting a little bit of reaction on the screen as I run the flashlight up and down the lens. And we're pretty much getting just noise on the on the scope, but we also are getting a bit of reaction. Let's 
So yeah, um, well the tube seems to be operational as um, I mentioned in the last video. I adjust the NO1 and the um, grid 1 voltages and we're getting some response in terms of shades. So I'm adjusting the grid 1 up and down. I'm trying not to adjust too far because last time I did that I, I was hearing something a bit weird and I copped a bit of a zap. <laughs> it's like there was a bit of like as if there was a bit of arcing from the from the um, circuit to the potentiometer pot pot um, a dial knob so I stuck some plastic knobs on just in case that happens again copped a bit of a zap thankfully it's very low current despite being about a thousand volts so so it's not as big a deal anyway the tube seems to be somewhat operational. Um, don't know to what extent, but I am getting getting reactions when I make adjustments. And yeah, we'll adjust the line frequency control. I've got it adjusted right to to proper power standards, 64 microseconds. We adjust we adjust it back and forth. We see the reaction on the screen and um, we've got horizontal width control and we've got the vertical control which you get an outstanding reaction when adjusted so it will squash the image for a bit I'll probably get a better noticeable reaction when I shine light down the lens Just the um, anode a bit, and then the, the grid. Getting a little bit of reaction. And of course we've got a messy video output signal and you can see the bit of movement as I run the flashlight up and down the lens we've got the sync amp control so you'll see the display going off, um, going out of stabilization back in again. Seems like the waveform has kind of gone double vision a bit. And we've got the high frequency peak control. We've got the black level control, which which you can see a lot of reaction when adjusted. All right, so yeah, we're still not at the stage where we're getting a any recognisable picture, but I've um. I've now pretty much got a few theories why. I think I've mentioned them in the last video, but I'll mention them again. Um, the main thing, the main problem I believe is the deflection coils because, um, yeah, I'm using I'm using the, def the, the deflection yoke from a Plumicon tube um, or, or Viticon tubes, 30 millimeters wide, um, and yeah, the positioning of the horizontal vertical coils is probably somewhere further down the tube or probably extends along a good portion of the tube and and I can't get the iconoscope tube right down the down the uh, yoke so I believe the deflection is probably far too low down the tube which 
in a sense which will of course cause the beam to to um, not deflect properly to the to the mosaic probably one it's probably probably going to the mosaic totally and utterly out of focus or it's probably deflecting to uh, it's probably it's probably just def it's probably deflecting somewhere on the tube but but not in the correct position that's my guess so yeah to really test this tube out I need to uh, either um, get a, another deflection yoke that's actually going to fit right up the tube neck and in the correct position area or make my own deflection coil but anyway I did this all for testing purposes so to see if I can get something out of the tube so it was a bit of a shot in the dark whether I would, this would actually work or not so yeah I just um, so yeah I chose to use the Plumicon tube yoke as the uh, test yoke for the for the uh, tube, I was um, I was suggest being told try at a one inch Viticon yoke, but I don't have one handy that's not already in a camera, so I thought yeah try one of these uh, pl uh, Plumicon tube yokes. I've got three of them on hand, so yeah I stripped this uh, yoke of its um, preamp and and uh, enclosure and other things and adapt it to to this enclosure and on an angle for the for the iconoscope tube as you can see it's all fastened in pretty reasonably well and at the I guess pretty much the correct angle for the tube well, anyway that's one I believe that's the main problem with this set up why I'm not getting anything output out, out of the uh, out of the tube another thing could be you know, I mean it'd be there'd be probably be plenty of things to need to check out obviously the deflection circuitry is probably not probably not getting enough deflection perhaps maybe um, also the video I might be getting too much or too little gain who knows there's many things and also I, even if I do get a picture out I'll have to then somehow um, incorporate keystone correction circuitry to to correct the um, a trapezoidal image as a result of of um, of the slanted scanning so it's the there's gonna have to be variation in in the horizontal scanning and perhaps even the vertical as well you have to sort of vary it to whatever position on the mosaic the uh, beam deflects to. Anyway, um, yeah, that's another thing to look into once I do get some kind of picture coming out of this tube. Anyway, um, it's early days yet. I'm glad I'm at least in the testing stage of, of my camera project. And I'm glad that I'm getting some form of reaction coming from the tube itself. So and um, the tube is still on the vacuum and and looking at the glow of the heaters, it's orange. I believe that if the tube went to air, you'd, get, you'd be getting a purple glow instead of an orange glow. At least I I recall that being the case with um, television picture tubes. Anyway, early days yet. A lot of testing, a lot of um, relaying of questions between me and my friend Richard Deal of Lab Guys World and other technical experts out there who could help me with this project and yeah hopefully we'll I'll make, I'll make um, further progress with this project and actually get something out of the tube <laughs> so yeah stay tuned for the next video when I make further progress this is Troy from Troy's Visual Arts Channel signing out